Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Tis the season, spring is here, bugs are starting to hatch. Today I'm going to tie for you a different caddis pupa. Now remember in the caddis life cycle, the pupa is the most vulnerable stage. So it is the type of, of the stage that you should be fishing the most often. The pupa rise, rise from the bottom up to the top Sometimes they stall, they go back down, they come back up. Sometimes they hang up under the surface film and the whole time they're in view of the fish. And this applies to both river caddis and lake and pond caddis. So the pupa is a very, very important life uh, pattern to be fishing. I'm going to be tying, it's called a ghost pupa. This is kind of a takeoff from a pattern from John Goddard, who is a uh, British fly tire a noted author, fisherman. It's a little different than the sparkle pupa that Gary LaFontaine developed. It's a little easier to tie, but it's very much in the same vein in that we have a body. We have, and I'll show you how this sheath changes once it's wet, and antenna and some beard hackle for legs. A very easy pattern to tie. I'm going to start off with just a standard nymph hook. This is a size 12. It's so 1x strong, 1x long, and you can easily tie these down to smaller sizes. I'm using Vivas 8-aught brown thread. I like the Vivas thread for this because I'm going to be using touch dubbing, and I need a thread that will hold wax well and will also hold the dubbing well. So I want to start about an eye length and a half behind the eye to leave a little room just enough to capture the thread. Now I'm going to be using a product that Alan Bet Bet uh, Gretchen Beatty provide, Touchitron dubbing, it's a touch dubbing. They used to make this for Gary LaFontaine when he was still alive. It's a very easy, it's a synthetic mix, very fine. And for touch dubbing, all you need is a tacky dubbing wax. They make theirs, we carry Overton's, uh, Hairline also has a sticky dubbing wax. So all you have to do then, make sure you don't have a lot of wax exposed out of the tube. This is really a little too much because it then tends to clot up on the thread. So I just want a little bit of wax on there. And then all you have to do is get your dubbing and just kind of just roll it down there on the thread. Keep it thin. That's the key to touch dubbing is to keep it thin. Okay. I also like to dub in two directions. I'll be dubbing backwards and then dubbing back forwards. That helps to trap that dub. And I'm going to spin the thread a little bit. That also helps capture it. So just like wrapping thread, we're going to wrap it. Not exactly touching wraps, but fairly close. We want to build up conical shaped body, make sure we're all the way down to the end of the hook shank and then reverse the process. I want to come within about an eye of the uh, end of the hook, a little bit more dubbing here. And this dubbing is available in a variety of colors, but you can really use any dubbing, natural or synthetic, that's fine enough that will allow you to use this. And as we come forward, I'm going to just make the wraps a little bit closer, just to taper this a little bit. But the key again is don't overdo the wax and keep the dubbing very, very sparse. All right, perfect. We'll go ahead and finish our thread to find behind the eye and then back. Now what I got from John Goddard's pattern is really a, a material that I would never think of to use for a nymph. And this is called polar fiber. You look at this and you think streamer. But this is actually a fantastic material for this particular application. It's silky, silky fine. It comes in a lot of different colors and it's much easier to tie in 
then with this sparkle pupa you have two bunches of antron that you have to then comb out fold over and do all of that it takes very little of this I'm just going to cut some off here it does have a bit of under fur to it so I'm just going to clean that out a little bit and just like on any sheath material, this needs to be translucent as close as you can get to transparent. So don't overdo the amount that you use. So I'm just going to square off the end that was closest to the mat on that. Tie this with a couple of wraps here. And I'm simply going to bring this around the fly the other side keep it fairly tight but again this is a veil a wrap or two to secure it it really changes significantly when it's wet and I'll show you that here at the end All right, for antenna, simply going to use a couple of ring neck pheasant tail fibers. Some of these pupa have antenna that are as much as two and a half times the length of the body. Some are shorter, but I think it adds kind of an elegant touch to the fly. On loose wrap, secure it, make sure it's centered and tie it down. Now the pattern also calls for a beard, which is simply some fibers underneath to represent the legs. People seem to have a difficult time tying that. Of course, if you're tying it underneath, it can be difficult, but I'm going to show you a method that makes it much easier regardless of whether you have a rotary capable vise or whether you want to tie it in just like it is. I'm just going to use common partridge feather. This is just Hungarian partridge. I'm going to stay with a brown feather since we have tan and brown here. Clean off the bottom of the feather. Grab it by the tip and express the hackle. What we're doing here initially is determining how long we want this beard to be. So typically from about behind the eye to about the hook point Then I cut the tip out. And now we determine the thickness of the beard by how much we retain on the quill. I don't want a lot of fibers on this. I think that's more than enough. And strip those away. So this is what we have, just a V shape. This is Defoe, D-E-F-O-E -E method, been around a long time. Simply tie it in with a couple of not real tight wraps like that and then pull the quill until you get the feather positioned where you want it centered under the hook and the hackle to about the hook point like that very easy a couple of wraps to secure it And off, then we'll whip finish. So that's what it looks like in the dry form. But when it gets wet, and this is where the difference really comes in. Is this. See how the water collapses that polar fiber? The sheath becomes almost invisible and it looks very much like a real caddis pupa. So as you saw, it only took a couple of minutes to tie. It's very, very quick, very easy to adjust to different colors, different hook sizes. You could even use a scud hook if that's what you prefer. You can weight it with some wire. You could put a bead on it. There's a lot of options here. 
So give it a try. Polar fibers is a remarkable material. I think another fiber that might do just about the same, although I haven't tried it, is floral fiber. It has much of the same consistency. Thanks for joining in. Any questions or comments, please let us know. I'll see you next time.